What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. I am your host, Justin Harold, and with me, as always, my co-host, Jeff Santa. Today, we are going to be talking about the Browns roster, not for this upcoming season, but for the season after, and some star names that could possibly not be returning. Uh, before we get into that, just like to say thank you guys very much for all the follows you've given us on Twitter, um, all the follows you've given us on YouTube, the likes, the comments, everything, subscribing, it has helped us out a bunch. Um, that's all been very great. We've really appreciated it. And uh, Jeff, how you doing, my guy? Doing good. We're on the road to 200 subscribers. You know, that first 100 came pretty quick, and we're going to try to keep the momentum rolling and keep the ball going for everyone out there, everybody that watches our stuff. So, you know, like we talk about, a little bit slow. We're getting jersey reveals at the end of the month, but for right now, I think everyone knows that if we look a little bit into the future, there's going to be a lot of mounting not issues, could be issues next year, but there's going to be some mounting challenges for Andrew Barry moving forward as the Cleveland Browns general manager. Absolutely. A lot of names to be watching for this upcoming season to see how they perform and then going into that next offseason of potential names that could be uh, no longer on the roster. So with that being said, I think we should start off with probably the most tantalizing name in all of Brown sports. And no, it's not Baker Mayfield. It's actually... Odell Beckham Jr. I shouldn't have phrased that as the Browns mm -hmm. because it's usually every NFL offseason, uh, no matter if he was in New York or if he was with the Browns, it seems like there's always a rumor about OBJ being on the trading block. So, Jeff, with that being said, what is your expectation for OBJ and being a Browns long term? I think it really depends on this year a lot. And of course, that's, you know, a lot of the sentiment is if he's going to be come back from injury and play, you know, to an exceptional level, if him and Baker are going to be able to, you know, get on and remain on the same page, kind of like you saw last year, unfortunately, before he was injured, there were some, you know, good plays between those two. But I really think that OBJ is kind of like a win-win almost, just because if, you know, if he plays really good, then maybe you could look at talking about making a deal, you know, extending him out in the sense that you could continue that forward, you know, going into the, the back end of his career, um, even though he's going to be uh, a lot of money, probably, I would assume he would be asking for a lot of money, but if he doesn't play very well, then it's kind of like, you know, he has, he was, he was a cool move for the city. He was a cool move for the fan base, but at the end of the day, it just really didn't work. And it was just unfortunate, but if he doesn't play very good this season, that might be a red flag, you know, for other things as far as how this year plays out. Yeah, absolutely. So is that, what is your, what is your thought? Is he on the roster next year or not? I think there's more indicators that say no, but I wouldn't be surprised either way, really, believe it or not. Yeah, I think obviously, like we said already, a lot of indicators of, you know, how they play this season will be of what we see of them next year. But for me, I think Odell's time has, you know, almost seemingly run its course. I think dependent on how far the team goes um, in the, you know, the whole entirety of the season, we won't go into offseason just yet um, or postseason, but I think it's time. I think it's run its course. I think he's been here. He's had, you know, it would be great to see a resurgence, but I think we'll see more of what we saw his first year, if not slightly better, which still in terms of his contract and what he, you know, has as his self-worth, I think it's a little bit too much for the Browns to hang on to. And especially with yep. another player we'll be talking about later on in this conversation. I just think it doesn't make sense to keep him around long-term. And I think that Unfortunately, no matter how the season really goes, I think he'll either be – well, I think he'll be traded. I don't think they'll just let him go to let him go, but hopefully um, you'll get something in return for him. Or maybe you see something that should have happened with another one of our players this year, and he maybe restructures his contract a little bit. So that's a possibility there, but who knows. So, Yep. So – Moving on, we'll go on to the defensive side of the ball. Talk about a player who's, I think, been a little bit under the radar since last season. Ronnie Harrison Jr., obviously playing on a contract year, got him over from Jacksonville last year for a third-round pick. Jeff, a player who shined, I mean, on a team that was very bad uh, defensively last year, a player who shined pretty heavily when he was healthy and now moves into that area of, you know, 
he's going to be in a stacked backfield with Grant Delpit and John Johnson the third. What are your what are your thoughts with him? Man, thinking about Ronnie Harrison, I I almost want to be kind of put him in the same boat as Odell Beckham Jr. Almost only because he was injury prone last year. He didn't play, you know, <clears throat> as much as people wanted him to, and you know, obviously in the new system and and a lot of other circumstances going on. But if I had to project this season for Ronnie Harrison, I think he plays unbelievable. I think he's a huge piece to our defense, and he shows that he really is worth, you know mid-tier safety money in the NFL. He's not a top-tier guy. I don't think he he will be unless he just, you know, is the benefactor of putting up huge numbers this year with the added help around him. But I think he, you know, he has an above average year as far as his talent is just because he's going to be slotted around other guys who are studs. And he probably, he'll probably walk, honestly. I don't think that we're going to repay him just because of, you know, John Johnson and, you know, signing some other guys on the defensive side of the ball this this offseason, I think this offseason really kind of predicted, you know, a lot of what's going to happen in future offseason just based on contract, you know, lengths for a lot of these new guys. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat with you. I think obviously, you know, he'll have a great season when he was in last year. He was great. Um, I just think the unfortunate part is that he was a placeholder for what is Grant Delpit's starting position. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's Grant Delpit's to lose for next off season. If they obviously think that he can't handle it, then maybe they re-sign Ronnie for hopefully what is mid-tier money. Uh, They already paid John Johnson a boatload of money. So um, obviously I think what's the ideal factor here is that, you know, he plays great for this year for us. And then he hands the keys off to Grant Delpit. So I'm in the same boat with you. I think he's not here after this season, which would be unfortunate, but mm-hmm. I think that's just the case with a lot of these players that we will be talking about on the defensive mm-hmm. side of the ball, at least. So it gets interesting. Cause I mean, I think, I think that I think out of everyone we're going to talk about, I think that they're like maybe one, one or two guys are like, could be like a for sure, like pretty much he's going to be back. And it's, it's scary. I mean, we're only looking ahead just because of, you know, the current state that we're in and we don't really have anything to talk about, but you do have to kind of think, you know, as a fan base moving forward and next off season, it could, there could be, you know, a substantial amount of turnover kind of to what we saw this off season. Absolutely. Absolutely. Moving on from the defense, we go back over to the offensive side of the ball. And now we're going to talk about one of the more or least glamorous positions overall, the offensive guard, Wyatt Teller. Um, Jeff, obviously, he played phenomenally last year, came out of nowhere um, after Mm -hmm. playing kind of rough, being traded from the Bills to us, um, had a little bit of a rough time his first season with us. And then this past season was just phenomenal when he was healthy, uh, was a monster amongst men. I know Jeff was a big, big fan of his. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll start this one off. I think it's clear cut. He's gone next year. Um, The money for, you know, a top guard is way too much for what we saw was possible without him. I think we had guys come step in and, you know, not, not do as good of a job as him, of course, but, you know, be able to do the job that needed to be done and got games where we won um, in the playoffs without, you know, a couple of those guard positions where we had guys step up into the role of guard and, you know, fill it admirably, of course, not to the standard of guys like Joel Petonio and Wyatt Teller, but good enough to the point where Bill Callahan can be trusted with, you know, fixing that spot next year. Yeah, I agree. I just think it's, you know, it'll be unfortunate because I like the guy and I think that similar, like you, like you said earlier, his time is kind of going to run out just because of, the position and how easy it should be to draft. I think that Wyatt Teller is an underrated move. I think everyone can agree with that, especially if he plays, you know, if he even plays just as good as he did last year. I mean, that trade will go down as one of the bigger steals as far as the Browns organization, you know, in the past 20 years. So, I mean, you tip your cap to the guy, but I think there's a real possibility that this time next year or, you know, a couple months ago, you know, in about eight or nine months, we're really talking about the Browns drafting another lineman in the first round, which might be annoying because we got Jedrick Wills, you know, top 10. And I feel like you see that the premier lineman, regardless of position, kind of go in the top 15, you know, the two guys this year, I believe went in the top, you know, 15 or 20. So if we're kind of on the outside of that first round looking in, you know, in the deeper picks like we were last year, it could be problematic, but I totally agree with you. I don't think that paying a lineman, you know, 
an exorbitant amount of money really makes any sense anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Just with a lot of these guys that we're talking about and trying to mm -hmm. retain some of them, because obviously we said that for the past three guys, we don't expect them to be on this roster next year. Yep. Um, now oh, I for think three. We, yeah, I think we move into a uh, area that we could have our first stay, but you know, again, I don't think this one is a very, it's going to be a more of a wait and see kind of thing, mm -hmm. but going to the defensive side, Anthony Walker, who I feel has already crept his way into the hearts of Browns fans. I feel like he's already somehow become a fan favorite Browns linebacker. Uh, maybe that's just because of how poor our linebackers were last year, but on a one-year deal on the BJ Goodson deal, um, I like Anthony Walker already. Um, mm -hmm. And it's hard for me to want to just be like, ah, one and done, he's gone. I think he gets the, I think he gets the nod after this season. I don't think he gets paid a lot. Um, depending on how he plays, I think he plays just as good, if not a lot better than what BJ Goodson did this past year. And he helps coach a young, young position group on the Browns into a, you know, success. And so for me, I think he's probably the culture guy moving forward, um, in that middle piece of the defense. So for me, I'm going to say that he stays. I think that Anthony Walker is interesting because everybody wants to see him play. I totally agree with you that Browns fans already love him. You know, he's embraced the city, which is great to see. But it's kind of one of those things where it's like I could see him taking team friendly deals because for the most part, you know, besides Jadavion Clowney, I think a lot of our new defensive pieces did take, you know, closer to team friendly deals than, you know, player friendly deals, which was good, which I liked a lot. And that's why I feel like a lot of people like these new guys, um, you know, your Troy Hills, your John Johnson's and your Anthony Walker's, of course. But it's almost like if he plays, you know, that BJ Goodson role and you see big steps from Jacob Phillips, you know, even bigger steps, you see Mac Wilson get back on, you know, track and, you know, Joe Jeremiah Wilson Cormo is an absolute stud. You might not see him on the team next year. I don't know if that would be a great move. I think that Anthony Walker would be somebody who, if we made it super far this year, he would want to come back on, you know, maybe even another one-year deal. But I still think it's another one up in the air. But for right now, I'm going to agree with you and lean that he, you know, resigns for even a one-year deal. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's going to start getting tough here now. So we're going to flip back over, go back to the same position group we started with, Jarvis Landry. I think probably uh, on this list, probably the most like fan favorited um, mm -hmm. and most like controversial out of all the people that we could probably talk about just in the sense that he makes a ton of money uh, for what he is as a secondary receiver. And, you know, that's just me simplifying it as him being a secondary receiver. But if you want to pinpoint back to when we started to turn this franchise around, when the Browns started to turn around, it was when Baker Mayfield and Jarvis Landry joined this team and Nick Chubb as well. But, you know, um, Denzel Ward, you know, a lot can be attributed to what everyone saw in um, hard knocks with Jarvis Landry being a culture guy, trying to instill some toughness on this team. And so, you know, we gave Odell the nod goodbye. So I'm going to give Jarvis the nod to stay. Um, I think that's probably the consensus of what everyone wants to see. And hopefully he'd be one of those players that, took, uh, that takes a nice little pay cut for the team. Yeah, totally agree. I think he's more likely to take the team friendly deal over Odell Beckham Jr. I think that if, you know, somehow you could get both of them to stay, I feel like that would also go on to, you know, attribute a lot of that to Jarvis Landry. But I don't know. I, I kind of disagree with you with the number two receiver. I know what you're saying there, but it's almost like, you know, even since we've got Odell, I still think the Bakers look toward, you know, Jarvis more. And I think that, you know, I agree with you that he shouldn't get paid, you know, like number one, because I don't think he's the number one wide receiver on a lot of the premier teams in the league. But what he does off the field and what he does in the locker room, you know, doesn't go unnoticed. And I really do think he wants to retire at Cleveland Brown. Could be way off base there, but I think that he would take, you know, even an extended, you know, team deal, like not just one year. He might take like three or four more years on a crazy good discount um, with the cap space going up. And, you know, hopefully we could keep him around to mold some of these younger guys that we still have in the wide receiver room. Absolutely. I mean, Jarvis is one hell of a dude. Um, obviously, he had the charity baseball game that he holds here in Cleveland now. 
Um, it's huge and he's so huge for the community and so huge for this organization. Um, I know that I want him to re uh, retire as a Brown. Um, it's just going to be, you know, what happens this season and how guys respond to what happens and how the team goes about their business. So um, it is what it is, but moving on to our last defensive player, unless Jeff has someone he wants to talk about that I don't know of Jadavion Clowney, the, the guy that, you know, I'm pretty apprehensive about. I think we should have kept Sheldon Richardson over him, but obviously a huge name, one-year deal. Um, Jeff, let's start with you. What are your thoughts? I think he's definitely gone after this year. I think that's why I feel like this year is kind of like it. I know we talked, had our expectations video, um, which you guys should go check out. I'll put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the description. I'll put it in the little eye in the top right. Um, but make sure you go check that out. It's a, just some, some, discussions and you know us talking about if this is the year that the Browns should be able to win the Super Bowl you know have the end goal in mind but I really think that this is the year that Andrew Barry you know he went all out with the clowny deal that's the main indicator to me that it's like well we better go now because I don't think he's going to be on the roster next year um, just because he's he's just a, he's he's the money guy you know he's kind of the OBJ on the defensive side of the ball it's unfortunate um, maybe if we win it he'd come back on something less if he has a great year, um, he really loves Miles Garrett, it seems like. So I would, I'm leaning no. And yeah, did we talk about, but did we talk about Denzel though? Not to, not to butt in. Ah, you're right. You're right. Go we ahead. Have not go, ahead about Denzel. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Clowney. No. And that's good. Cause we still have two players on the offensive side of the ball. Yes. I got so distracted with all the other guys. And then the, who, cause there's I, a, I think there's we're gonna a have lot of people. This is what I'm telling you, dude. There's a lot of people that is, it's going to be a tough off. It, next year's off season might be more difficult than this year's off season. I think we're going to have a differing opinion for the next four people, I think. So I'm on the boat that Jadavion Clowney is going to stay. And here's my reason for it. I think he has an explosive year. And I think Miles Garrett notices that notices that, you know, he has a new running mate and I think he's going to end up taking a cut off of his huge contract that he got. Um, Cause he's one of those guys that I don't, I'm pretty sure he's like, I mean, he's not, but for some reason he like comes off as a minimalist to me. Um, obviously he's making huge money, but still, I think he's a guy that in his mind could take off a couple million for his contract and give it to Jadavion Clowney to stay and be his running mate long-term. Um, I think he does. I think he does big things. And I've been on the opposite boat of DJ Ryan Clowney doing good things just because of his track record with injuries, how he's actually played. But there's something about moving forward with Jadavion Clowney and Miles Garrett together that have just been racking my mind. So I'm going to say he stays. So, yeah, I, I could see that. I definitely could see that. I could see him taking a cut, you know. And, you know, I would hope that he has a great year and he stays on the field and then we continue to have him. Absolutely. So, Jeff, there's two guys or two guys for me that are uh, – no, we have three guys. We have Jarvis, we have Anthony Walker, we have Jadavion Clowney for me, and two guys mm -hmm. for you, yep. which is Jarvis and Anthony Walker. Now we're going to move on to the three players on rookie deals. Nick Chubb, we're going to start off with him. Jeff. I think you know my opinion on this one. Yes. So I'll start. I don't think Nick Chubb returns next year. Um, Nick Chubb is one of these players that I think, in reality, will probably take a pay cut, but even a pay cut for a top three, top five running back is going to be too significant for him to pass up. And also, I think Kareem Hunt is sitting right there to be paid a significant amount less for him to be the stud line or a stud running back like he was in Kansas city. And so unfortunately out of the three guys that we got to pay here with the next, next three conversations, I think Nick Chubb is the one that gets the ax. Doing this, ma making this, you know, video and talking about this right now is making me feel a little bit better because the cap is going up and I am, I think I'm, uh, you know, not a, I guess you could say like a pessimist when it comes to maybe next off season, but I don't like, I have so many no's where it's almost like, I probably have so many no's that some of my no's are going to be yeses. I don't know if it's going to be in the right spot, but I agree with you. Chubb, 
you just don't pay for, or I mean, he's not even a first round running back. You just don't pay good running backs though. It's weird. It's the weird part of the NFL. I feel like it's the part of the NFL that a lot of people don't understand. And if I had a bunch of, you know, stats put together, you know, maybe we'll throw, maybe we'll do a whole different video about why premier running backs, you know, traditionally don't get paid. It's just not in the cards for a lot of these guys. I feel like you're seeing it more though. I feel like you're seeing, you know, running backs get big contracts where you're kind of like, you know, that might not pan out, but I agree with you. I don't think he's on the roster. I think it's extremely sad. I think there's a nice farewell from the city. I think, you know, he throws something on social media about how much he loves Cleveland and, you know, the Batman's got to go or the Batman's got to go, you know, the dark night. But it's kind of like that w- it will be a very sad day, but I think it's more likely than not that it is something that's coming up in next year's offseason. Yeah, it's just such an easy – position to replace and unfortunately we have Mm -hmm. a second guy behind him already that they're both going to be vying for you know contract money and I just don't think either one I mean Nick Chubb still had a phenomenal season last year I just don't think that either one can make a case for themselves to get that kind of max running back deal here uh, with both of them who knows Um, it's it's going to be tough to watch Nick Chubb walk Um, yep the fan base might riot I mean, if you, if you understand, like, if you understand the business side of it though, because it really might be the weirdest position in sports because Mm -hmm. it's like this, you're handing this, the ball off to this guy who's running at dudes who are trying to tackle him, who are, you know, a lot of the times bigger than him in most, you know, scenarios in the game. So he's taken a lot of wear and tear and he's the good ones you don't pay. And then you, they, you turn around to the draft and you think, Oh, you might want to draft one in the first round, but that's also pretty taboo too, where Nick Chubb is pretty much your sweet spot right there. He's second round guy. Who's a complete, you know, steal because you don't want guys in the first round because of the same thing, you know, could have first round guy, you know, never even play because of one or two injuries. So it's like a weird a weird part of football, a weird part of the NFL. And you're right. It would be very sad. And out of the three guys that we're talking about in these last three picks, it's just, he's been the most productive and he's been the most reliable. Yep. And so, um, you know, it's hard to, you know, give a guy like that the ax, but moving on from him talking about Denzel Ward, thank you for reminding me. Cause I can't believe I almost passed up on the, the Buckeye. A player who hasn't been on the field as much as we would all like him to have been, but when he is on the field is a premier top five, top 10 lockdown cornerback at a position that I think is very hard to fill. And obviously we saw a lot of that last year. For me, it's, it's no question unless he's super injury prone, like he misses half the season this year. Um, I think he's re-signed just because we saw all the problems that were there last year when he wasn't there and when other guys weren't there. So I think it's no question he's re-signed. It's interesting talking about this, you know, because we have the whole training camp, we have the whole season ahead of us. And a lot of these guys are very, you know, hyper-specific as to what happens around them, I feel like, as well as injuries. I feel like injuries are big for a lot of these guys. Denzel, Clowney. Um, you know, some other of our, you know, pieces that could be around even talking why teller, but it's like, how good does greedy Williams play this year? We just drafted, we just drafted Greg Newsome. We have greedy Williams kind of sitting in the back. We have Troy Hill now who we signed. So we effectively added two cornerbacks, you know, even three, if you're counting greedy off an injury. So it's like how many teams add three cornerbacks in off season and then, you know, keep, and all have starting potential and then keep one of their bigger names the next year. I mean, that seems not traditional to me. I know it's kind of a weird circumstance, but if he's injury prone this year, which he has been, he's proven to be injury prone. I love Denzel Ward. Uh, you know, another guy, like I totally agree with you, top 10 cornerback in the league, one healthy, um, I love his story. Love that he's from Ohio State. But if he's injury prone and Greedy Williams plays very well and Troy Hill plays very well, I don't know, man. I'm gonna lean no. I'm gonna lean no just to have a different take and just to be. I'm gonna be, you know, the more of having turnover next season than you are, just to have, you know, slightly differing opinions. But I think there's a real possibility where I, it's a coin flip from the start. And then there's too many circumstances this year for me to really believe that he's, you know, a lock to be back on the roster. So, and I don't think he would take a team deal, believe it or not. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going to go with no on Denzel Ward. A lot of turnover for me. 
Very interesting. I thought we'd have very different opinions in terms of turnover, but it seems as if I'm staying a little bit, you know, with the team and you think our, you think. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying though. The cap's going up. So it's like, I don't think we're going to lose all these guys. I really hope yeah. we don't, but I'm kind of just preparing for the absolute worst, yeah. you know, especially with some other people having to be paid. <laughs> some other people as in Mr. A Baker yes. Mayfield. Yes. This is what I'm saying. Cause I, cause I, believe it or not, I think he's going to be back. Um, I, I know he's going to be back and I think we're going to overpay him, but that's just me. Yeah. I think he's going to be back. Um, overpaying who knows it is the most important position in the, in the, on the team and everything, but obviously, uh, performance would be an indicator of what he should be paid compared to other quarterbacks that also need to be paid this off season from his same class. But I think it's a no brainer. I think Baker Mayfield is a back this year and next year and for years to come. So that's, that's my take. Um, it would be hard to watch a lot of these go, a lot of these guys go. And 100%. obviously you had, you had a lot more than I did, but we'll see a lot of the, a lot of this stuff we can't predict until the season's over and we've seen how they played. Yeah, definitely. I think first, I think the best part about this off season though, is that you kind of know that 90 plus percent, Jarvis and OBJ aren't both going to be on the roster next year. Besides that, it's fun to speculate, and it's it's pretty much up in the air as far as it goes besides those two guys. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Jeff, with that all being said, obviously we said it time and time again. Uh, we're in a dead period right now in terms of news. Um, a lot of stuff is just kind of slow. Like Jeff said, we do have a jersey reveal on the 24th of July. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So we will try to be on top of that. It is speculated that it's going to be a white jersey um, that will be honoring the 75th anniversary of the Browns being an organization. But that being said, thank you guys all for watching this video. If you could please leave a subscribe, a like, a comment. Let us know what you guys think. Who's going to be on the roster next year? Who's not? Um, who knows? Who knows how money will play out with the cap next year? But with that being said, thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you later. Peace.